The person who designed it did not design it well. She did not think it through. It's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, and Obsessive Skincare Ingredients Checker. Today I'm going through this skincare bracket that I posted on Instagram. You choose your favorite ingredient out of each matchup, and then eventually you get to the finals and you pick your favorite ingredient. I also polled my Instagram followers for which ingredients they liked, and so we're going to go through the popular vote today as well as my personal bracket. It's been really interesting seeing different people's brackets and what won for them. If you want to fill your own in, I'm going to put a link in the description to my blog post which has the empty bracket. I would recommend that you fill it in before you watch this video so that you won't be influenced by what's popular or what I like. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. So before we get to the results, a few things about the bracket. So how I picked the ingredients, they were pretty much just random ingredients that I thought were popular or that I personally really liked. I probably could have split it up into actives and sunscreens and moisturizing ingredients to make it a bit more fair, but Eh, it's just fun. Another question I got a lot was why I didn't organize it by type. So I have tretinoin versus uh, retinol versus adapalene in one corner. And the reason is because that was really hard. There just aren't the same number of ingredients in each category. And so organizing it just didn't really make sense. And so I figured doing it randomly, eventually you're gonna get weird things matching up against each other like in the second round anyway. So we may as well just have it in the first round and save my brain from frying. So here is my personal bracket first. The first matchup is glycerin versus caffeine. In case you didn't know, I am obsessed with glycerin. There is a molecule of it here. I have really dehydration prone skin. It is pretty much a lifesaver. It is the best like 10 minute glow up I can have. So that one, caffeine, I've barely tried. There are a few caffeine products that I've been meaning to try, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I will try them very soon. I believe they're meant to be good for your under eye and my under eye does need a bit of help. Glycolic acid versus kaolin. I do like a good kaolin clay mask. I have oily skin, so it's really nice for soaking out the oil and my skin looks nice afterwards, but I'm really lazy. So I end up doing a clay mask every two months or so. So I had to give this one to glycolic acid. Glycolic acid was my first alpha hydroxy acid. Since then I've branched out, but I do have a soft spot for it. I do like it in a low concentration toner. I picked licorice over mineral oil. Licorice is good for sensitive skin and it also helps with hyperpigmentation. And I am a pigmentation monster, so licorice had to win. I think charcoal is really overrated, but maybe I haven't met the right charcoal product. I do have a video on charcoal and how it works. I just don't think it really works that well on skin, like not not a lot better than like clay or a scrub. Lactic acid on the other hand, it's like glycolic acid, but better. It's a better humectant. It's not quite as strong, so maybe it won't give you as immediate results. But for someone like me who has pigmentation prone skin, lactic acid is probably a bit safer as well. So I pick lactic for that. So for the rest of the top left bracket, glycerin won over glycolic acid. For lactic acid versus licorice, I pick lactic acid because Alpha hydroxy acids, I do love chemical exfoliants and they're really good for unclogging my pores. So I picked that. So glycerin versus lactic acid, this one was really, really hard and I'm still not entirely happy with my answer. I picked glycerin when I did it. Now I'm sort of having second thoughts and thinking I should have picked lactic acid because lactic acid is also a humectant as well. So it's kind of like humectant plus exfoliant, glycerin's just a humectant. I don't know, I picked glycerin, so I'm gonna have to live with that glycerin one in that top left quadrant. When I was running this poll, a lot of people messaged me and complained that I was making them make really hard choices and they couldn't choose. But as you can see, I am also torturing myself. I am suffering with you. We are in this together. All right, the next bracket, we have retinol versus aloe vera. That was an easy choice. Retinol definitely wins for me. Aloe vera, I think it's really overrated. Just use glycerin. Everyone just use glycerin. Glycerin's great. Tretinol versus shea butter. I have oily skin, so butters and stuff don't really do it for me. So tretinol wins and Tretinol's doing great stuff on my skin as well. So I've got like lots of like smaller pores around my cheeks. I pretty much have poreless cheeks. It's really weird. I picked snail over hyaluronic acid because personally I found that snail has done more for me. I've probably just overlooked it a lot because it does tend to be quite low down the ingredients list and it's not always called out as a star ingredient. So maybe it is an underdog, which I should have picked, but I picked snail. Also, I really like Fiddy, so I had to pick snail for her. Snail did win her bracket. I picked zinc oxide over mandelic acid because I kind of felt like I had enough acids already, which I realize is a stupid way of thinking because it's not 
how the bracket works, but I picked zinc oxide because it is a nice sunscreen ingredient that does everything. And I haven't tried that many mandelic acid products that I've noticed doing anything for my skin, so I just picked zinc. So finishing off the bottom left bracket, retinol versus tretinoin. This was a really easy choice for me, tretinoin all the way. Tretinoin is like retinol, but better in every way. It is more evidence-based, it is directly active, so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's getting converted properly in your skin. It is regulated as a medication, so that means it has all these safety and efficacy checks in place. It in Australia at least, is subsidized because it's a medication and so it is really cheap compared to retinol. With snail versus zinc oxide, I was pretty meh about zinc oxide, so snail won that. And the snail versus tret, sorry Fiddy, it's it's tret, tret won. Top right bracket, azelaic acid versus avobenzone, I pick azelaic acid. I do think avobenzone is underrated. I think it gets an unfair rap because it is quite unstable, but it does give really high UVA protection when it's stable. But because there's so many great UVA filters available in Australia for me, I just couldn't pick it. So azelaic acid is great. The only problem with azelaic acid is that I haven't really tried many products that have a nice texture. I think because you need to use such a high concentration of azelaic acid, all the products tend to be like a bit chalky and gummy, but hopefully I'll have a few good recommendations soon because I am trying out a lot more of them. Plant oils versus salicylic acid. I do like plant oils. I really like rosehip oil. It was one of my first skincare products that I noticed gave me a massive difference on my skin, but salicylic acid wins because I am oily with tons of blackheads. I need the salicylic acid. I also have a Paula's Choice salicylic acid in a spray bottle. It's so good for bacne. So because I have this horribly damaged hair, I have to use a lot of hair conditioner and afterwards um, it tends to clog my back. So you can just like hunch and hope for gravity to do its work and you just spray and it gets on there and no clogged pores, no bacne. Amazing. Petrolatum versus benzoyl peroxide. I have a love-hate relationship with benzoyl peroxide. I know it works great. All of the studies say it works great, it does work great, but the peeling and the irritation, it's just sometimes not worth it for me. I did also have this one experience back when I was in second year uni, and I used 10% on my face thinking I could dilute it to 2.5%. It doesn't really dilute that well. I probably just went overzealous. And I had a sunburnt looking face for about a week and everyone asked me if I was okay. So not the best memories associated with benzoyl peroxide, also, it stains things. Well, the opposite. It bleaches things. And... Ah. If you're already making my skin super flaky, don't destroy my other stuff as well. Bad benzoyl peroxide. I think I also picked Petrolatum because it gets such a bad rap from, like, natural brands. And it just shouldn't. It's a really good ingredient. It's safe. It does lots of things. It's effective. Just let it live. You can also light fires with Petrolatum. Petrolatum is petroleum jelly, by the way. So you put it in some cotton wool and then you light it and it burns really well and so it can set the rest of your fire on fire. Life hack. Centella versus Matrixel. I just put Matrixel there as a general name for the anti-aging family of peptides. I don't really use peptide products that much. I don't really see a big difference in my skin and I think maybe it's just because I don't have enough wrinkles yet, which is... Sort of like a humble brag, I guess. I'm sorry. Centella, I have used a lot of products with Centella. I do really like how well it heals my skin. My sister uses it a lot as well. And so Centella is our family love. So I picked Centella. So salicylic acid one over azelaic because I've got more experience with it and I just really like it. Petrolatum versus Centella, I picked Petrolatum because I need lip balm. Salicylic acid versus Petrolatum, I picked salicylic acid. And so that won my top right quadrant. On to our final quadrant, ceramides versus niacinamide. I picked niacinamide. Ceramides are a bit tricky because you need to have the right ratio for them to work and you have different ceramides. And so generally it's just a bit too hard to work out if a product is good. So niacinamide, it's more of a no brainer. It's not an irritating product, so you can just dump it on your skin and it should be fine. It's really good for sensitive skin. Niacinamide sort of does everything. It decreases pigmentation. It fixes your skin barrier, it protects from certain types of skin cancer, it's anti-aging, anti-wrinkle, anti-sallowness. There's also a study showing that it reduces sebum, it probably cooks your dinner for you as well and gives you a kiss before you go to work, so nice and I won that. A Adapalene versus Tinosorb, I've never actually tried Adapalene, it is a retinoid that's particularly recommended for acne, it's in... different. So Tinosorb S1 because it is my 
default UVA filter. Tenosaur versus Niacinamide, this was hard. I picked Tenosaur because Niacinamide, it does sometimes give you a bit of a red flush if it's not formulated carefully, so Tenosaur won for that. Vitamin C versus Squalane, I picked Vitamin C. Squalane, it's a nice moisturizer, but I can replace it with a million other moisturizers. Vitamin C, I need it for my pigmentation. Green tea versus honey. Green tea has more studies on it. I'm a, not that convinced by either one, but green tea does have antioxidants. It's more likely to work. Vitamin C versus green tea, easy choice, vitamin C won that. Vitamin C versus Tenosorb, I picked vitamin C. I guess it's a bit weird because ten Tenosorb S is one specific UVA filter and vitamin C is a group of ingredients. So I think it's just the person who designed it did not design it well. She did not think it through. So on to our semifinals, we have glycerin versus tretinoin. And I picked Glycerin. I disagree with Michelle from three days ago. She was younger and not as wise. I would have picked Tretinoin, but I'm stuck with Glycerin. I guess, I think my thinking was, Tretinoin is easy to overdo, and when you overdo it, it really hurts. Glycerin, you can't really overdo. You can make your skin super sticky, but then you can just wipe it off. So I think in terms of regret, maybe maybe I filled this in after a tretinoin night and my skin hurt. Salicylic acid versus vitamin C. This was hard. And again, I think it might have been the fact that vitamin C is just annoying sometimes. So it's really good at fading pigmentation. It does antioxidant and anti-aging things, but it's less essential, I guess. So salicylic acid does also fade pigmentation. Not quite as well on me, but it can be used for that. So you can use it in salicylic acid peels. I think also vitamin C, it's unstable, it's a bit of a pain to find a good product. It also tans your skin sometimes, it decomposes to form one of the ingredients in some of the newer sunless tanners, and so you end up with weird metallic smelling skin and brown fingers. So salicylic acid is a lot more friendly and that spray is so good. So the final showdown was glycerin versus salicylic acid, and I picked glycerin. Glycerin 1. I think my thinking was, if I couldn't use anything else ever again, salicylic acid would dry my skin out. And so glycerin, I had to use that, because glycerin at least wouldn't hurt. On to the popular vote. So I've put this on here with the numbers. The numbers are the percentage of people who voted for the winner. I'm not going to go through it in as much detail as I did for my own bracket because I've talked about all the ingredients before. I'm going to go through some of the things that jumped out at me, and I'm going to go through my disappointment, my intense disappointment. Why did you not end up with the exact same bracket as me? Your mileage may vary, but only within one percentage point of mine. So overall, I think there was a big actor's bias and I also participated in this bias. I think we all just tend to think that actors are like the silver bullet, the hard hitters of our skincare routines, which they are a bit, but having a good cleanser, moisturizer and sunscreen are super important. And I feel like that really does about maybe 60, 70, 80% of the heavy lifting for most routines and actors are just like the bit on top that you add on top to get your extra boost at the end. If you don't have a good sunscreen, moisturizer, cleansing routine going, then your actors might even make your skin worse because a lot of them do make your skin more photosensitive. With the top left bracket, I am mostly in agreement with this, except that my favorite glycerin got knocked out in the second round. It lost to glycolic acid, not by too much. So it was 62% to glycolic acid, but Poor Glycerin. It's okay, I still love you. You're my favorite. With some of these matchups, I wonder if things won because they were more common, so more people had tried it and so they were more confident in voting for it. So for example, glycolic acid versus lactic acid. A lot of people who have tried lactic acid prefer it, but glycolic won, and glycolic is in a lot more products than lactic, so it could just be that sort of bias. So I think this is why retinol won over tretinoin as well, which Carolyn Hurons is very upset about, and I am upset as well. You've disappointed us greatly. But I think also because tretinoin is a prescription only product, then a lot less people have access to it, a lot less people have tried it, and so it's also a bit scarier, I guess. So retinol won with that round. I did also have a lot of people messaging me, asking me what Matrixel was. So I think, again, there is the thing where we are going to vote for the things that we've tried. Our final matchup was retinol versus niacinamide, which I think are two really great picks. I'm really happy to say that everything in our semi-finals is reasonably well researched and retinol ended up winning. So I think we do all love vitamin A because it does so much. It's anti-aging, it's anti-acne, and it's really evidence-based. Although most of that evidence is thanks to tretinoin who got kicked out, I might remind you. 
I think also the finals was a little bit of sensitive skin versus non-sensitive skin, and so if your skin gets destroyed by retinol you probably picked niacinamide. Did you enjoy the bracket? Was it easy for you to pick or was it difficult? Did you agree with the opinion poll? Should I do another bracket on a different topic? Leave me a comment with all of your thoughts. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. You can also check me out on Instagram at Lab Muffin Beauty Science and check out my blog as well for tons and tons and tons of posts on lots and lots of sciencey nerdy things. See you next time.